Hello guys and welcome to a new news episode. So the last two days there wasn't that much news to report, but today it's very different. Today we are getting all the news for, <laughs> you might say we get news for three days just today. We've got a couple of texts here. The vengeful artistocrat, sly and manipulative, once a member of Team Vader, he mysteriously left to join Team Go Rocket and now contributes to their Shadow Pokemon program. So we got Arlo here. I, I see why am I, the lone lioness, mysterious and alluring, growing up under difficult circumstances, forced her to be street smart and to learn martial arts. She since climbed the ranks to become one of Gio Giovanni's most trusted confidants. We got Sierra here, and then surely they are going to post something for Cliff as well soon. Uh, by the way, if you click on this link, it will only take you to a storyline. Uh, an old storyline of 2019, you can see here, this is 2019, you can scroll all the way down. This is a storyline from 2019, so I'm not sure why they put that in there, as a reminder, I guess. Uh, but they are pushing the storyline for Team Go Rocket again, um, which is uh, going to appear at GoFest 2020 on uh, day two. Uh, it's, it's very safe to say that, I'm pretty sure that everybody uh, understands that by now. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen precisely on day two. Trainers, we recommend saving your gift interaction during Go Phase Day 1 until the friendship habit that comes to you. As it will feature a global challenge to send gifts to friends, if the goal is met, gifts open to the rest of the habit this time may contain an unexpected item. So you might think, uh, why am I saying this again? Because I said it yesterday as well. Well, they updated this. They're now saying, all trainers will also be able to open, send, and collect up to 200 gifts during the first day of Pokemon Go Fest in your local time zone. Please keep in mind that you can hold 20 gifts maximum at a single time. So they're saying that you can not only open and uh, not only send and collect 200 gifts, but you can open 200 gifts, which is massive. So uh, the rumor goes around, the people have seen screenshots that uh, we are supposed to get rare candies out of these gifts. How many rare candies these are going to be uh, remains to be seen. Uh, if it's going to be rare candies at all, maybe they change it up. But it is likely. Um, so if you can open 200 gifts, let's say you get one rare candy uh, on average per gift, there will be 200 rare candies. If you get three rare candies on average per gift, there will be 600 rare candies. So at this point, uh, normally I would say try to open 30 gifts each day to get as many balls as you can for go fast. But now I'm going to advise to try and stock up on Pokeballs by using the Pokestops and Gins. But when it comes to gifts, don't open a single gift and try to get as many gifts as you can. Hold on to all of them. Uh, if your friend, friend list is not full, share your codes on different sites. Um, go to sites to scan QR codes from other people. Try to get that friend list filled up um, and hope that they are going to send a gift. You could give your buddy a name, uh, you could say uh, send or delete, you can say uh, please send gift or gift for go fast and hopefully many people will be able to send you a gift and then uh, during this hour on day one you can open all those gifts. So make sure that you open them at the right time. So you want to do it in the hour that is related to gifts but you want to wait till the bonus activates. So first the hour will start, they will tell you if you send this many gifts, we will unlock uh, the reward. And you have to wait till the reward is actually unlocked. And in the remainder of that hour, you are going to open all those gifts. Uh, don't forget that you can fast forward. So you can press open and then you can already tap on the back button or on the X button. Uh, the X button will not be visible, but it will still be there. So you can click on it either way. And you should be able to open up those gifts really fast. And hopefully we can get a lot of rare candies from them. Oh yeah, surprise, surprise, we have unlocked all of the Pokemon that we could unlock, so all nine have been unlocked. Um, yeah, that was uh, obvious that it was going to happen, but okay, it's great. Mm. Then, uh, we can see here Fictini, by the way, with a balloon, more of the Go, Go uh, Rocket storyline. And here is a major update coming which is going to be uh, Season 3 for the Go Battle League. 
and everything else that they're going to announce for season three. Let's just go to the post. It's going to be a big read up, but we're going to through we're going to go through all of it because it's interesting information. There were a lot of changes that happened in season two. Traders who reached rank ten earned a few new avatar posts, which were very few people. We tested out the Premier Cup format, and it was so well received that we decided to bring it back for season three. Great. We're also excited to share that traders have completed 1 billion battles in the Go Battle League. We are thrilled to bring traders even more opportunities to battle during Season 3. So, 1 billion battles, that is a lot. When we think back about when PvP came into play, I'm not talking about the Go Battle League, but I'm talking about PvP specifically. Not that many people were interested in it. Uh, but when the Go Battle League started, you could see that more people were getting interested. There were coming more PvP channels. PvP channels were, be were becoming uh, bigger. There was a bigger interest to it. And now we can see that 1 billion battles have been completed already. So that's definitely a sign that uh, there is a lot of interest in the Go Battle League, which is fantastic. Uh, so hopefully the Niantic can um, try to fix the servers, try to fix the lag, so we can all have a good experience with the Go Battle League. But here are the things that Niantic are going to change or what we can expect from Season 3. Once Season 3 begins on Monday, July 27th, that is like four days from now, that is very soon after GoFest, uh, your end of season rewards for Season 2 will be available on the battle screen. So if you're not ranked 7 yet, I would strongly advise to try and hit that so you can uh, get the Elite uh, Fest DM and you will also get a, more, a little bit more starters, I believe. You can expect similar end of season rewards for Season 2, except that you'll receive an Elite Fest DM instead of the Elite Charge DM, which we got for Season 1. Uh, season 3 will follow the same league rotation as Season 2. So first Great League, then Ultra League, then Master League. Uh, as noted in the schedule below, with a notable addition, the Premier Cup is now coming to the Ultra League 2. So the rules to the Premier Cup, no legendaries, no mythicals. Um, I think it was a success in the Master League. Uh, you could maybe not use as many Pokemon in there as you would have liked, but there was definitely an interesting meta in the uh, Premier Cup. Uh, I think it was better than the Master League. Definitely gave more opportunities to people who don't have that many legendaries or rare candies. So it's good. And in the Ultra League, we had the Cresselia, which was really strong. We had the uh, the Mewtwo, uh, the Mewtwo with the shield, what is it called? <laughs> uh, we had Articuno. Um, yeah, we had the uh, Giratinas, I mean, a lot of good legendaries that were dominating the Ultra League, and it was kind of hard to build a team without legendaries, but now the Premier Cup is going to the Ultra League, so we're going to have a completely new meta in this Premier Cup. Uh, we're going to go through some other posts of what Pokemon might be good later, but it's going to be interesting to see how that meta is going to develop. Mm, so the Great League... July 27th till August 10, which is two weeks. Ultra League Whips Premier Cup from August 10 till August 24th, another two weeks. Master League and Premier Cup from 24th August till September uh, 7th, another two weeks. So that's uh, six weeks in total already. Ultra Leagues and the Premier Cup No CP Limit will be available September 7th till September 14th, that's one week. So we got 2221, which is a total of seven weeks for Season 3. And then, of course, Season 4 will begin right after that. So, one thing to note here is they're saying when all three leagues are available, they are saying the Premier Cup with no CP limit. Does that mean that the Premier Cup for the Ultra League will not be available? Because that will have a CP limit. So, that's going to be uh, interesting if they made a mistake or if, if, if they made a mistake or if they actually mean that the Premier Cup for the Ultra League will not be available when all three leagues are together. We'll have to see about that. But, uh, yeah. I think it's great. Another Premier Cup for the Ultra League. Uh, so uh, don't expect a Premier Cup for the Great League. It's really unnecessary. There are barely any legendaries that are uh, overpowered in the Great League. So I don't think we'll be getting that ever. But the Ultra League and the uh, Master League both have their Premier Cup. I think this is a really good change. These dates are tentative and we'll be sure to update you if anything changes. Okay, so it could change. Expect the following to stay the same in Season 3. There will not be a walking requirement in order to uh, battle in the Go Battle League. That's fantastic. Friendship level requirement for battling remotely will remain at good friends throughout Season 3. 
Remember that you can scan another trainage QR code to battle them no matter where they are. So that's another great uh, thing. Uh, so good friends is only one heart. Uh, great friends is two hearts. Good friends is one day, I believe. So you could just add a random person, uh, send the gift and have them open it, and you're good friends, and you can battle. So you can basically battle with anyone you want, anytime. So that's fantastic. The battles, wins, and ratings required to reach rank will remain the same. Uh, one more thing about the QR code thing is that people uh, from the Sylph GG, for example, are able to make tournaments so much easier because people don't really need friendships. You just need to add someone and uh, get the one heart quickly, which can happen in one minute, and then you can do the battle. So it's much easier to plan tournaments, and that is really good for the PvP community. Uh, after items described by Pikachu, Libra will continue to be rank 7 uh, rewards. And uh, yeah, like we just said, the battle wins and ratings required to reach ranks will remain the same. So I believe it is 2000 for rank 8, 2500 for rank 9, which is already tough. I mean, in season 2, hitting rank 9 was tough. It was tough. Um, if you are not that into PvP, if you don't do the counting, for example, it's going to be very hard to reach rank 9 already, uh, let alone rank 10. Uh, if, you would, uh, if you're not committed to PvP and learning everything there is to know about it, every single matchup and accounting and everything, if you're not committed, there's just no way that you're going to reach rank 10. I'm, I'm sorry guys, it's just... It's, you have to really, really dig deep to understand everything. You have to put a lot of time in it to reach rank 10. What's new in Season 3? A few changes coming. More cups will be added. In addition to the Ultra League Premier Cup, we're introducing the Flying Cup, where only Flying-type Pokémon will be allowed. The Flying Cup will be available during an upcoming event, more details to come. Uh, okay, so they're saying the Flying Cup will be available during an upcoming event. So they're not saying if it's going to be uh, during the Great League time or during the Ultra League time. They're saying it's coming during an upcoming event. So it could be somewhere randomly in between these leagues that uh, suddenly the Flying Cup will be available for yeah, a limited time, I guess. Based on trainer feedback, we've decided to remove the Battle Until You Win feature for Season 3. Okay, so... Um, the thing is that some people enjoyed it. I think if you are struggling to get any wins, uh, it might be nice to, before you reach rank 7, it doesn't matter if you lose. Uh, your losses do not count against you. The only thing that... But if you win, you will gain points either way. Even if you lose seven matches in a row and you win the last one, you will get, gain a few points until you reach rank seven. So I think for the starters, it was not necessary to put this away. Uh, then for the people who are at a higher rank, worried to lose more rank. Well, I mean, if you're going to lose nine matches in a row, it doesn't really matter if it's in one or two sets, does it? Because you could, okay, so in the season 3 you could lose the first set 5-0. If you lose the second set 4-1, or 1-4 I mean, then you're still going to drop the same amount of points, I would assume. But in the end, you could, in season 2, you could have done more battles during the day, because they only count as one set. Uh, which brings me to the reason why they might have done this. So, you might remember a post from uh, Lawyer Socks, was it? I hope I got the name correct who hit rank 10 first, and he did it by first tanking his rating, going to the uh, battle until you win continuously, which led him to have done more battles than he should possibly have done, because he was getting more than 5 battles per set. And that led to him being able to gain or lose more points per set, because apparently that is a function in the game. That uh, So normally you would gain like 50 points for going 5-0, or lose 50 points for going 0-5, but he was getting 250 points for going 5-0, uh, and therefore he could make a big jump, you know, so if you're if he was like around 2750, he makes one 5-0, boom, 250 points, rank 10. So maybe they uh, removed this feature to uh, uh, battle against that, so people can no longer make use of that. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't really understand why I took it away. Your guaranteed reward encounters will be a bit different for Season 3. At each listed rank, you'll encounter these Pokémon. Pidgeot starting at rank 1. Okay, so we used to get uh, Metagross for the rank 1. 
And now we're getting Pitchet, which I don't think is an improvement. But uh, okay, Galarian Sexagoon starting at rank 4. So remember that Galarian Sexagoon evolves into uh, a strong competitor for the uh, Go Battle League, uh, Great League, and well, mostly for the Ultra League, Obstagoon. And they have Galarian Farfetch'd, which is still waiting for its evolution uh, uh, Surfetch'd. So they will be appearing uh, at rank 7 or higher. Uh, Surfetch will be decent at least in PvP. Of course, we have to see when people are trying to use it how it's going to fit in the meta precisely. But yeah, the PvP channels and uh, are quite interested in Surfetch to try it out. Rufflet starting at rank 8 is the same as uh, season 2. And Scraggy starting at rank 9 is also the same as season 2. So again, uh, reaching rank 9 will be a struggle. So if you are able to get Scraggy or not, it's going to be tough. And Pikachu Libra starting at rank 10. Okay, so we know that in this current season, season 2, um, around six to 700 people are rank, uh, rating of 3000 or higher now. So rank 10 at the moment. But of course, you also have people who went to rank 10 and then dropped their rating. So I would say that maybe 1500 or 2000 uh, people are rank 10, but really not that many. Furthermore, uh, coming season, the battle set should go back to 5 because they are ke they were keeping the uh, 6 battle sets for the whole of Season 2 but I believe they are going back to 5 now and it's only going to be 7 weeks Season 3 so I would estimate that even fewer people are going to hit rank 10 in Season 3 so, and as we, they said already that the ranking systems will say the same so I think still uh, it's a bit tough to get ranked I'm not sure they might Maybe this would make it easier. For the premium reward tracks, you'll now earn rare candies after your fourth win. The number of rare candies rewards will be reduced from eight to six. Okay, so in season two, if you use the pass and you got uh, five wins in a set, then the fifth fifth of the rewards would be rare candies, eight rare candies. Now in season three, if you use a premium pass, you need to win four battles in your set, and then the fourth reward will be six rare candies. So a nerf in rare candies, however, uh, it's actually a gain, probably because you're going to win more uh, four to one sets than five to zero sets, so you will get more rare candies in the end. Trainers who finish season three at rank seven or higher will receive an elite charge TM rather than elite fast TM. Besides that change, end of season rewards will stay the same as in season two. Okay, so elite charge TM, Definitely interesting. If you are not into PvP, I would advise to reach rank 7 at least. Uh, like I said, everybody should be able to reach it. Every loss that you make before rank 7 doesn't matter. If <laughs> if you are really not into PvP, you don't want to spend too much time, uh, and you get a wrong lead, just forfeit the match instantly. Keep it really simple. And when you see that you have a good chance to win, go for those matches alone. And uh, yeah, you will reach rank 7, and you will get that elite Charge TM, which are valuable items. Um, so yeah, for reaching rank 10, there will be a new after pose and after item. So in uh, Season 2, if you hit rank 10, and you didn't hit rank 10 in Season 1, then you got both poses for Season 1 and 2. So I think if you reach rank 10 in Season 3, you will get all poses from all three seasons. Additionally, we have two Go Battle League teamed events lined up for Season 3. Stay on the lookout for updates regarding these events on the Pokemon Go blog and social media. So we know the Flying Cup is coming, and I wonder if this is one of the two uh, events that they are mentioning here, or if there are going to be three in total, one for the Flying Cup and two others. So it's going to be two or three events. Um, again, if you are not into PvP, then this time I would advise to not do any battles at all until this event comes, and then you can start at rank 1, and you have a good chance to win a series of battles. So we know there has been one event before with Meryl, and there was a 1 in 10 chance to get the Shiny. If you uh, use the Premium Pass, and you got 5 wins in a set, there were 5 Merrells already. So, yeah, if you're not into PvP, I would advise to wait till this event comes, and then you can make the most of it. Uh, you can even throw in a Premium Pass to get more rewards, and give yourself a good chance at the Shiny. If the event is going to be the same way as Meryl. Of course, we don't know that for sure. 
The following existing attacks have been updated for trainer battles. Drill Pack, flying type charge attack now deals more damage. Brave Bird, flying type charge attack now deals more damage. Also severely lowers the user's attack, but they later uh, stated that they meant defense here. So there was a mistake, they mean defense. Infestation, this bug type fast attack now generates energy more quickly. Uh, Hex, this ghost type fast attack now generates energy more quickly. Powder Snow, this ice type fast attack now deals more damage. Blizzard, uh, more damage. Flash Cannon, requires more energy. Focus Blast, deals less damage. Moon Blast has a, a smaller chance of lowering the opponent's attack. Let me go through them again. So Drill Pack, one of the Pokemon we know using Drill Pack is the Zapdos. Um, the Shadow Zapdos suddenly became very popular in the Great League and became a meta Pokemon for the Great League. Uh, so now the Drill Pack will do even more damage, which leads me to believe that surely Zapdos is going to be even stronger. Brave Bird. So um, yeah, it's going to deal more damage. So it's going to be interesting to see which Pokemon are going to benefit from this. So the great thing about um, the fact that it lowers the defense is that you could charge up energy to do two in a row. And after you have done two in a row, your defense will be uh, very low. But that means that the opponent cannot get a lot of energy for farming you down. Because you were going down really fast, so the opponent cannot gather a lot of energy to use on your next Pokemon. So Infestation, I'm not sure for which these uh, moves are going to be good. Of course, all the PvP channels and PvP Poke are going to uh, look at all of the new uh, possibilities. Hex, though, uh, somebody said, I believe, that this is going to be good for Drift Blim, which is already a solid option in the Gobetta League, um, especially in the Ultra League, but also in the Great League. So if Hex is going to generate more energy quickly, it's going to be very interesting. I believe it has something like Icy Wind, which drops the opponent's attack stat, but don't quote me on that. Uh, powder Snow, so we know Momoswine, for example, uses Powder Snow, which is just a pathetic move for damage, but now it's actually going to deal more damage, so it's going to be interesting to see how much damage it's going to deal. Um, we know that Momoswine is already pretty good. Uh, in the Premier Cup for the Master League, it has been uh, used by several people, but if your Powder Snow is actually going to do a decent amount of damage now, while also generating energy fast, then we might be seeing more Mama Swines. Might be a better option to use. Blizzard is going to deal more damage. I thought it was already a hard hitting move, but it's going to deal even more damage. Uh, Flash Cannon requires more energy, and Focus Blast deals less damage. So one of the Pokemon that comes to mind is Registeel. Registeel has Flash Cannon and Focus Blast, and as we all know, its first attack does like zero damage, basically. Um, so yeah, it's going to be nerfed, Registeel. Um, so Kiang has already said that yes, it will be a nerf, but it's still going to be useful. And we're going to come to that back to that later. Moonblast, one of the biggest, uh, one of the most important Pokemon using this move set is the Cressalia. So we know that Cressalia in Season Two Ultra League was one of the most used Pokemon, and uh, you could see it everywhere. There were a lot of mirrors as well, a lot of timed out matches. I believe a match lasts five minutes uh, maximum. There were so many timed out matches because of all of those Cresselia mirror matches. Um, but now it's going to be slightly less good, but it's still, it's still going to be a meta Pokemon, I'm sure, but it's going to be slightly less good. So we know that it used to have a chance of one in three, to lower the opponent's attack stat. And considering how bulky it is, it usually could last, uh, get at least two charge attacks in, if not three. Um, but now, yeah, they decrease the chance. What it, what is it going to be? One in five, one in ten? We don't know yet. The following existing attacks have been updated for gym battles and raids. So Drill Pack is also going to deal more damage in raids. Uh, just like Brave Bird, and Hex is going to uh, generate energy faster. Uh, for battles and raids. So if you are stuck with a Gengar with Hex, then we'll have to see if Hex maybe becomes one of the best moves for Gengar. We'll have to see uh, how much faster the energy gain is going to be. Along with these updates to existing attacks, the following Pokemon can learn an attack they couldn't before. 
Braviary and Close Combat. Braviary can use this attack to make opposing Rock and Steel-type Pokémon more dependent on protective shields. A bonus Snow on Icy-type Weather Ball uh, is fitting for Pokémon that appears when it's snowy. Blipper and Water-type Weather Ball uh, fitting for Pokémon that appears when it's rainy. So Pelipper is actually going to be interesting now. And we're going to come back to that later again. I don't want to continue as you go back and forward. We're going to come back to that later again. But Pelipper is going to be an interesting Pokemon now. If you still have Wingles from the past event and you haven't uh, cleared your storage yet, then I would advise to look at the uh, IVs for these Wingles and see if one of them is good for PvP. And then we have Empoleon and Drill Pack. Empoleon is already a good Pokemon in PvP, in the Great League, Ultra League, and it has also been used in the Premier Cup. Um, but now it might be even better. So we know that Empoleon uh, is using Hydro Cannon as uh, one of its important movesets. Uh, but now it has another option with Drill Pack. So uh, we'll leave your opponent guessing whether it will have Drill Pack or another move. I think it's running Blizzard as well. So yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if Empodium becomes even stronger now. So geez, that's a lot of information, guys. <laughs> so the Go, the Go Hub has also made an article about this, but they are basically saying everything that we already went through. So there's really no need to go through it. Uh, Focus Blast, we're going we're gonna to have to see if this impacts Mewtwo, as Focus Blast is one of its moves. Uh, might be important for the Master League. The Silf Arena has said, or heads are still spinning from the news and we'll have more analysis for you later. In the meantime, check out, meantime, check out all the details. Okay, we have checked out all the details and we are going to wait for the Silf Arena to make an analysis. And when they do, I'm going to share it with you guys. We're going to read through it. Then we have come to Kiang. So first thing we're going to talk about is V-Create. Uh, these are now the stats in the code and likely the real stats. They will have a power of 95. The energy costs 40, and there will be a 100% chance, so guaranteed, that you're going to lower your self-defense by three stages. Which sounds dreadful, uh, but as Keying says, you can do seven confusions, and then, assuming that's the best move, and then you can do two of those three creates in a row. And as we said from uh, Brave Bird also, if you do two of these in a row, uh, then you have done your hard-hitting moves. And after that, you won't leave an op opportunity for your opponent to farm you down, as your defense will be so incredibly low that they really cannot gather any energy from uh, farming you down. So, amazing meta coming for Go Battle League. We're going to go to PV Poke later. Um, so this is Kiang talking about uh, Brave Bird, where they made a mistake. It is, an, in fact, the defense that is decreased by three stages, uh, not the attack. Um, season 3 timing seems to be more in line with Season 1 than Season 2. Hopefully they don't make it as long to get to rank up, or else almost no one will hit rank 10. So this is Kiang also seeing, uh, talking about that problem. Um, and then he's saying there's a new flyer in town, so he is talking about Polipper here, which beats a Registeel, Galarian uh, Stunfisk, uh, users or Pokemon that are using uh, Mud Bump or Mud, mud Slap or something, Azumarill and Fighting type Pokemon. So we can see it here, Pelipper, and it will have Wing Attack, Hurricane and Weather Ball as its best moveset. Uh, it can also be used in the Flying uh, Cup that's coming, because Pelipper, let me go here real fast, is in fact a Water and Flying type Pokemon. So uh, we know that the uh, Weather Ball, which is a water type in this case, is going to be uh, getting Stab, same type uh, bonus. And Hurricane is also getting Stab and Wing Attack as well. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see Pelipper come to the meta. Who would have thought that? Mm. So this is Kiang saying that uh, Registeel is still will be good, even though he got the big nerf. Definitely going to lose more matchups now. And we're going to go to PV Poke. This weekend, we're likely to get a taste of victory uh, with Victini. While its general numbers aren't fantastic, it has key matchups against Galarian Stunfisk, a close, a close victory apparently, uh, and Ersla Stropius, 
It's not a must-have, but it has potential for fun. Okay, so basically it's not going to be a strong meta Pokemon, but it's going to be usable. So if you're really into PvP, you could give it a try. Jeez, so what else do we have? A lot of moving parts, so bear with me as new info comes out for now. Here are some preliminary Premier Cup rankings for Ultra League. We still have a move rebalance ahead of us, so hold tight on any investments. Yeah, PvP has to PvP Poke has to see how the uh, move balances are going to uh, come out precisely, so we can make another update later. But for now, he is uh, thinking that uh, he's saying it here. I'm expecting Swampert, Venusaur, Togekiss, and Gengar to be the main features with a lot of anti-meta opportunity. One interesting thing is I haven't found an A-rated course yet. Ultra League doesn't have a dominating steel type, so it will be interesting to see how it affects play. We can see here that apparently Venusaur is going to be very important in the uh, Premier Cup of the Ultra League. Which is great, because Venusaur should be a Pokemon that is accessible to everybody. Uh, as it only costs uh, 10,000 for a second move, and there have been a lot of opportunities already to get a good uh, Bulbasaur, so you can use that. Uh, you only need to make sure you do get the Frenzy Plant. Um, so yeah, if you didn't have Frenzy Plant yet, see if you maybe can get it from a friend. Um, or you will have to use a Elite Charge Gem, I'm afraid. But then again, do you have one? Because we got a fast Elite, so that, yeah. I hope you did get Frenzy Plant. And here I got Swampert, which is an, an, again is great. Another 10,000 Pokemon for unlocking a second move, and many opportunities in the past to get a good uh, Pokemon, good IV one. Then we got Gengar. So if you uh, kept a good one, a uh, good IV Gengar for the Ultra League, then apparently this is your opportunity. You can use it in the Premier Cup for the Ultra League, it's going to be very strong. Uh, they are advising the triple. Shadow moveset, um, yeah, so that's going to be walled by some uh, Pokemon. For example, Snorlax is going to completely wall the Gengar, but against other Pokemon, this is the best moveset. We got Machamp, Lapras, uh, Togekiss, Ferrothorn, and Bolion. Uh, they are listing Flash Cannon here, in, so not Drill Pack yet, they are listing Flash Cannon. Um, Milotic. Shadow Dragonite, Escalvier, then we got Electifier, Shadow Form, Blastoise, Charistar is still good, Obstagoon, we got a Shadow File Plume. Many of these Pokemon are very accessible, so I hope that uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, battlers playing uh, the Premier Cup for the Ultra League. It's going to be interesting to see how the meta is going to develop precisely there, especially after the uh, move rebalance. And that is basically all I have to share now from PvP Poke. We're going to go really quickly to Niantic here. Uh, they are saying the last clues here, that was 18 hours ago, I am sorry, it came in at uh, half past one midnight for me. So there was no way for me to uh, redeem the code, unfortunately. Uh, and you can see that trainers are really fast, the puzzle has been solved. And there's a bonus we're playing this week, we're giving you this bonus code. Uh, so only a few people were able to get the really special prize for the puzzle, uh, which I'm not sure what the reward was. Maybe I can share that tomorrow with you guys. Um, so by the way, Clue 13 was this Pokemon was featured for Community Day in April, which was uh, Abra. But it's all irrelevant now. You don't need to solve the, the code because it's already been done by other people. So if you were one of the people who got the clue in time and managed to get the reward, then uh, congratulations. Really well done. Uh, but this code here is for everybody. I will put it in the description as well, so you can uh, uh, copy paste it. You go to this site here, and you log in with whatever account, and you can redeem that code, which is going to be 10 Ultra Balls, 10 Max Potions, and 1 Sino Stone. So 10 Ultra Balls are always welcome, especially with GoFest coming up. And that is that. That is the puzzle. Suddenly it is done. Poker miners, uh, we can read through this text really fast, but there's nothing really interesting here. Sponsored gifts appear to be in testing in other countries, European and APEC regions. At the same, uh, as the same settings found in North American Game Master are being added and then removed to those region GMs. 
To correct previous tweet, the end time of the sale of the ticket is 6 p.m., not the end of GoFest itself. Sorry for the confusion. Crowbit and Golbat had their belief camera adjusted, and also Victini had its evolution page removed, which we assume were added in error. Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, this is Pokemon Go Hub. So we went through their article, article already about uh, Season 3, which is basically stating the same as we already went through this article from uh, Niantic. They also made a GoFest article, which we can see here. So we know uh, yesterday we went through all of the YouTubers making guides for GoFest, and Pokemon Go Hub has made a little guide or tips and tricks as well for GoFest. So you can read through that if you want. Uh, I'm not going to do that because this episode is getting long enough already. Uh, we're going to go to Niantic support here. Trainers prepared for GoFest 2020. Tickets are available for purchase until July 26th at 6 p.m. local time. Uh, okay, so July 26th, that is the Sunday. So you, uh, only two hours before the entire GoFest event ends, you can still buy tickets. Not that it makes any sense to me. If you're going to buy your ticket late, then make sure to do it at least uh, at the end of day one, so you can pick up the special research there. What else do we have? Uh, there was another Go Battle League uh, uh, maintenance, which uh, was restored five hours later. Five hours later, that's a long time. Oh, yeah, they announced it beforehand, but it took three hours. We're excited to share that based on local time zones, medals for Pokemon Go Fest 2020 are beginning to roll out to traders with Persia tickets. So, when you are viewing this video, you probably already have your badge. Um, yes, yeah, so they talked about Brave Bird. Uh, we already know about the gift interactions. Um, and that seems to be everything. If you see a blank page when tapping the Pokemon Go Pass ticket in the shop, please try uninstalling and reinstalling the Pokemon Go app before trying again. Thanks for your patience. So yeah, apparently that is uh, solved if you are having this problem. Uh, uninstall the game and reinstall it and try again. And that is that, Blipper. Um, and that is everything, I believe. That is everything. So there was a lot of information. I tried to go through it uh, a little bit faster to keep the episode a bit shorter to you, uh, to you guys. Um, yeah, so GoFest is coming up. It's coming up uh, it's really soon now. Um, besides the gifts, some other tips I could quickly give you is to make sure that everything is charged. You want your uh, Gotcha or Go Plus device charged. You want to make sure that it's functioning. So check it out if it's functioning. If not, then see if you can get the latest update. Um, you want your power banks charged, your wires charged. Uh, also check them out if, to see if they are working. You want a reserve a charging cable because the cables are not always reliable sometimes they can uh, you know they, they can kind of break or stop functioning so you want to have a reserve uh, cable for the power bank to connect to your phone and yeah I mean sunscreen is probably a good idea if it's going to be warm uh, I definitely made that mistake myself uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago when it was the double stardust event and I went a little bit crazy and it was like 29 degrees here and I definitely my skin is uh, you know starting to make new skin I don't know how to say how to say that but uh, yeah so make sure you get the sunscreen people are recommending umbrellas for the rain and funnily enough also for the sun because it could give you some shade for the sun actually umbrellas so umbrellas seems to be a great choice no matter the weather um, so yeah if I have more tips and tricks maybe I will share them tomorrow but these are the important things that you need to know beforehand, so you can still get those items in time. Uh, but I'm going to leave it at that, and I will share more information with you guys tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next episode. Hey guys, here I am again. Sorry, the episode is still not over. I forgot to mention the virtual team lounges. So I thought, should I do it tomorrow? But if I do it tomorrow, then I'm too late, and just, the stream is already starting. So it's better if I edit to today. Trainers, are you excited for this weekend? Download your printed home kit, stock up on Pokeballs, and prepare your incense. Pokemon Go Fest 2020 is happening in just a few days. The 
The in-app festivities aren't the only way we're bringing the event to you. Throughout the weekend, there will be an exciting new ways to connect with your fellow trainers. It will be almost as if you were in, at an in-person Pokemon Go Fest with everyone. Relax in the Virtual Team Lounge. The Virtual Team Lounge is an online space that will feature a ton of exclusive Pokemon Go Fest content and more. Similar to a Team Lounge at traditional Pokemon Go Fest events, this space will provide trainers worldwide uh, a place to chill in when they're taking a break from playing. Enjoy exclusive Pokemon Go Fest video content and more. Rest your catching arm and watch some videos together with your fellow trainers. Stay in the loop with the latest events happenings. Check out what the Pokemon Go team and trainers around the world are posting on social media about Pokemon Go Fest 2020, all without leaving the virtual team lounge. Grab a sneak peek at our Pokemon Go Fest 2020 live stream lineup. Tune in to our live stream host in the virtual team lounge and catch the following segments. Pokemon Go Fest 2020 global kickoff on Friday, July 24th at 2 p.m. Uh, GMT minus 7. So you will have to see what time that is going to be for your time zone. Join your fellow trainers and start the festivities together with a kickoff keynote by John Henke, founder and CEO of Niantic. The makings of Pokemon Go Fest. Ever wonder what it takes to make to make a, a Pokemon Go Fest happen? Tune in and hear from Liz George, manager of community and social, and Lara Warner, senior game designer, to find out how we make the adventure happen. Print at home kit. How to build a gift. Uh, feeling crafty. Learn how to build a real life gift directly from the artist who created it. Craig Kitsman. Download the print at home kit now to get ready. Pokemon Go developer insights. Here from Matt Sleeman, product lead for Pokemon Go, as he shares some insights and highlights of what's to come. So this is going to be interesting. The uh, Matt Sleeman, product lead for Pokemon Go, is going to share insight of what is to come. So he could bring some major announcements. Uh, he might go for some smaller announcements, but this could potentially be very interesting. Getting started in the Go Battle League, now the Go, uh, new to the Go Battle League, fear not, we're here to help you build a team featuring Pokemon that you'll encounter during Pokemon Go Fest. So there are probably going to be spawns uh, related to the Go Fest, which are going to spawn during the uh, battle teamed time. There were a couple of teams, one of them was battle, I, I think. So maybe you can see some uh, meta-relevant uh, Go Battle League Pokemon spawning during that time. And then they're going to say, uh, they're going to do this uh, team building thing for it. Social impact and diversity. Learn all about what Niantic is doing in the realm of social impact and diversity. Pokemon Go Fest 2020 commercial behind the scenes filmed and directed remotely with team members in London, New York, San Francisco, Seattle and Tokyo. Our Pokemon Go Fest commercial Look Closer was inspired by our global trade communities and relationships. In this behind the scenes segment, you can learn about how this commercial was made. Plus, you can look forward to an appearance from the director, Ryan Johnson himself. On the go update. Catch live segment updates and play Pokemon Go trivia for the chance to win prizes. This live segment will be occurring several times throughout the stream. Okay, so you might win prizes. Another reason to watch. Avatar Fashion Show. Share a screenshot of your avatar style using Pokemon Go Fest 2020 for a chance to be featured in this segment. So things to look forward to here uh, is Matt Sleeman talking about what is to come and the fact that you might be able to uh, win some prizes. That's not all. For more, head over to the virtual lounge. Okay, we will. Pokemon Go Fest 2020 Global Kickoff. Choose your team. Um, okay, so this is the schedule for uh, July 24th for Friday. We can see at 11 p.m. there's going to be a kickoff by John Henke at 11:04. Learn what it takes to make learn what it takes to make events like Pokemon Go Fest happen. At 11:17, they want to go to Print at Home Kit. At 11:30, behind the scenes of the Pokemon Go Fest 2020 commercial. Then, it, then uh, oh, that's going to take very long actually. That's going to take three hours for behind the scenes. Okay, you, you might not want to watch all of that. Maybe a good moment to uh, make a lunch break. Uh, well, it depends on your time, actually, because this is uh, uh, minus seven something time. I'm sorry, I'm not great at the time zones. Go fast regional kickoff. Welcome Asia, Pacific, Islands, and Oceania. Uh, Oceania. Okay, so that's going to only going to take half an hour. Then we're going to go to uh, enjoy Pokemon Go Fest with your buddy and go snapshot from Yuri Games. Starting at 3, 3 a.m., less than 10 minutes. Mascots, if you're happy you know it, 4 minutes. Um, Mascots, I Love Pikachu and Eevee is going to take a very long time. Um, 
Oh, now I understand. This is goes from July 24th till July 25th. So, okay, so they're doing this uh, basically in the middle of the night, 11.30 p.m. Uh, and then the kickoff will be for Asia, Pacific Island, Oceania, which will be the middle of the night for USA time. But for these people, it's going to be the start of the event. Okay, I understand. Uh, on the Google page, Zoe Two Dots, how to take amazing photos with Go Snapchat. We got uh, Let's Go Try Go Battle League Guide, Pokemon Go Fest 2020 Global Kickoff Replay. That's a replay. Go Fest Regional Kickoff for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, getting started in the Go Battle League. On the Go update, Kybron Go Battle Challengers. Couple of gaming, getting ready for Pokemon Go Fest 2020. Pokemon Go Fest 2020 Global Kickoff Replay. And welcome to Americas for the kickoff. Pokemon Go Developer Insights, Matt Seaman, finally. Social Impact and Diversity. We got a G2G Media, Story Time for Little Trainers. Swagger on for the Go Battle League. We got Trainer Tips. We have a Trainer Battle Champion Challenge, which might be interesting to some of you guys. Challengers take on elite group of trainers. Each of these elite trainers specialize in battles with a specific type of Pokemon. If the challengers can defeat all four trainers, they will battle each other for the title of champion. So that's uh, 5.45 p.m. And what did they say for the time zone? The time zone is uh, PDT GMT minus 7. So note if you want to play that, uh, note that and see what time it is for you. Playing Pokemon Go with Ryan, on the go update at Avatar Fashion Show. So we can see that the uh, developer insights are going to be on July 25th at 5.12 p.m. So translate that to your own time zone. Uh, and if you're interested to see for what they are going to say, then tune in at that moment. Um, if you don't have time, then don't worry. I'm sure that people are going to film it or uh, and you can uh, read about it later or so. Okay, so that's everything that's happening for these for these uh, lounges. What happens if I choose team? Uh, going to be the same thing. Okay, so now, that is finally everything for the episode. I'm sorry that took a long time, but there's a lot of information we had to go through. A lot of interesting information as well. I'm um, really looking forward to uh, the GoFest event. Tomorrow I will be sharing more tips and tricks and things you can do to prepare or things you can do during GoFest to optimize your play. And uh, yeah, I want to wish you a great GoFest already. Uh, I mean, maybe some of you will be playing in New Zealand uh, before I upload my video. I will try to upload it a bit earlier, but uh, yeah, I will see you tomorrow in the next episode.